What's up guys, Alex from FIFA Scouting Tips here and welcome to Season 3 Episode 5 of Pompey Youth Stars. Just before I get started, uh, I've sent around the survey uh, for helping out with my website and YouTube channel. I really want to know your views on what I should do next, what kind of things I should do to improve the channel and uh, my website, all those sorts of things. Uh, if you go on the uh, Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash FIFA Scouting Tips, or on my Twitter account, which is uh, at FIFA Scouting, the link will be there for you to go and fill that out. Just It will take 30 seconds and it will really, really help me uh, to improve what I do so please do that if you have a second um, as well as that we started playing games on legendary now so uh, we'll see how we do with that I want to know if um, if I can cope with it really because world class I was doing pretty well and we want to uh, try and make this as realistic as we can so we're gonna get straight into it with this game against Aston Villa on legendary let's see how we do we wanted to take this game by the scruff of the neck and we came out with the first opportunity we missed the first header there but the ball dropped to very and a fierce shot went just over the bar Pretty decent effort from that kind of shot and it was unlucky not to go in. Ajay Boateng with good work down the wing, crossed it in to Bong, who won the header and just hit the crossbar. Very unlucky there, that was a very decent effort. But as with um, it always is with Legendary, you can never count the opposition out. They came through, but a fantastic stop from Doherty to keep them out. He is on scintillating form at the moment. Just look at that for a save. If it wasn't for him, I would have lost so many games so far this season. Uh, but Aston Villa came again very shortly afterwards. A looping header, but again Doherty was equal to it keeping out the effort there. Uh, Ajay Boateng again posing a threat down the wing, beating his man and leaving him on the floor. Crossing in for a free header for Vary, but it was straight at the goalkeeper. I really should have done better with that one. Golden opportunity. Uh, Bong had his own chance as well. Threw on goal. I was sure he was going to score that, but a terrific save from the keeper. Bong usually buries those. So we came in at halftime and it was a very, very even match at this point. Pretty much equal shots and shots on target. The possession was pretty equal as well. And uh, I was um, I wouldn't have been surprised if we came out with a nil-nil draw at the end of this game because they were very evenly matched teams on paper and in practice. Both had very decent chances going forward. But in the second half, Aston Villa came out first. My defence just fell apart. No one could get near the striker and he buried his opportunity. That was not Doherty's fault at all. That was a defence just, uh, just basically not there at all. Easy opportunity. But it took ages for me to get back into the game, but when I did, I struck with vengeance. A great shot there from Vary. For some reason in the game, the replay came up instantly, but we get to see a few more angles. A lovely volley there, first time, uh, to open his account in the Premier League. And what a time to do it as well, that was in the 85th minute, to help me get um, get back up to one all. And uh, just look how excited Doherty is by the prospect of that. Really thrilled to see that we're drawing one all. Uh, but it was a fantastic shot. Really great way to sc start your scoring account for uh, for Portsmouth. Um, but I was really sweating at this point. Um, my defence again it was a complete shambles. I don't know what I was doing. But somehow they managed to miss a golden opportunity with a goal begging. And uh, then that was it. That was literally the last kick of the game. So I was so lucky to get away with that. And again the stats were very very even. And for once probably the first time ever in the Premier League I've managed to have uh, the majority of the possession and it was against legendary as well so I'm pretty proud of that to be honest uh, but the shots were very even shots on target as well a very very evenly matched game so one all draw was probably pretty fair on the balance of things very with an 8.2 rating he was the man of the match he had a really good game plenty of decent shots on goal and of course he got his first goal for the club as well Ajay Boateng I thought should have been rated a bit higher because he had a very good game on the wing Bong was kept pretty quiet but in the end it didn't matter too much because we did get the draw and that's not a bad result against a team like Aston Villa Right, up next we have this match against West Ham. I am trying to make these games as difficult for myself as possible playing on Legendary, but we still seem to get some decent results here, so uh, let's see what happens with this game. Um, I think it should be similar to the, uh, the Aston Villa game in terms of difficulty, so we'll see if we can get a decent result again. I came to regret saying that because this game was an absolute shambles. Just four minutes gone and a first shot on target for West Ham, bang, in it goes. 1-0 down, welcome to the Premier League and uh, their, that was their first opportunity and in it went. Uh, second opportunity for West Ham, could it get any worse? Well yes it could because that went in as well, just 16 minutes gone, already I was 2-0 down and fighting for my life. Did they stop there? No, they kept on the pressure, kept on attacking. 3-0 after just 25 minutes and the game was basically over. I'd already lost. Don't know what was happening in this game. I did have a chance of my own, but it was a pretty weak effort from Paulette. Didn't really trouble the goalkeeper and that was after 35 minutes. West Ham took that as a sign that they needed to score more, so they went ahead and did just that. Another shot, another goal. In it went. 4-0 down, it wasn't even half time. I was just, I didn't know what was going on to be honest. Uh, that wasn't a particularly great effort but it was about as best as I could do. Then tried a long shot, just for the hell of it really, wide it went. So I was just not in this game at all. And of course West Ham 
just had no mercy whatsoever. I don't even know how that one went in, but in it went into the top corner, half time, and it was 5-0 at home. I was getting destroyed here by West Ham. And I, yeah, I don't understand if it was Man City or Man United, something like that, but West Ham, I was not expecting this whatsoever. 60% possession to West Ham. I just was not uh, not in this game in the slightest. Pretty much every single one of their shots had gone in. It was just unreal. Uh, Doherty just had no chance. They were all blinders pretty much. He just did not stand a chance with them. Uh, I did uh, make some changes, brought on Bong because it was getting pretty desperate and he hit the crossbar for the second game in a row. Lodigan smashed in the rebound and look at that celebration. That's pretty appropriate considering the situation at half time and how much I was getting trounced. Um, I did decide that it might be a good idea to rest Bong for this game and bring on Bennett. Uh, try him as a starter but that was a silly mistake um, but then after that goal I thought you know maybe we could get into this game we have Bong but then that happened my best player pretty much Paula jumps up for a header and falls and gets injured and I had to take him off he just couldn't continue not what you need and then yeah it got worse 6-1 82 minutes gone 6-1 to West Ham unreal stuff and you know it's bad when Carlton Cole scores against you you know I don't have the thing against West Ham I'm just pretty bitter after this game I think but that was it that was I got put out of my misery 6-1 at home against West Ham. Unbelievable stuff. Like I said before, pretty much every single one of their shots, it just went straight in. Uh, nothing Doherty could really do about it. That, but those stats make it look like it was fairly even, pretty even possession and total shots, but it was not at all. Do not be fooled, I was not in this game in the slightest. Completely dominated by a superb West Ham team. No one got any decent ratings at all, apart from Lodigan, but that's, that's flattering to him really. He wasn't in it at all. Doherty 5.4 rating, but there wasn't much he could do. Uh, I was just torn apart by this West Ham team, they were all over me and it was just surreal, probably the strangest game I've ever played because every shot by them just went in and at first I was I, I was angry, I was frustrated but then I just had to laugh, when they scored their, their fifth and sixth goals it just became funny, I just could not compete at all. So there you go, these things happen sometimes and I was just completely destroyed. Well, what the hell happened with that game? We just got completely EA'd. I think the game just decided that I was just I was just gonna get fucked over basically and every shot was gonna go in from the opposition and it was just my time to lose really heavily and as well as that, we got a player injured. Paulette, one of our best players, is now out for three months. Couldn't really have gone worse than that game. It really was pretty much awful, pretty brutal really. Uh, but these things happen, I guess, when you play on Legendary. Right, up next we have this scouting report from Schumacher and he is in England and we've got loads of players to sort through this time. So first up we have Emil Croft, 62 to 84 potential, probably not going to be high enough, I think it's going to be early 70s to be honest, so we will uh, reject that player I think. Uh, then we have George Creswell after two months, 62 to 80, even worse, so he is definitely getting rejected. Uh, Giles Fulton, 62 to 86. Uh, it sounds okay, I guess. Um, just about worth considering, so I will leave him for one more month. Uh, then we have Isaiah Willis, 54 to 72, definitely not worth considering. Uh, Jack German, 67 to 85, again looks quite good. Uh, it's going in for two months, so I'll give him one more month just to be safe. And then John Mahoney, 69 to 85, he's looking quite good now. Looks like he could be a striker and could be quite a quick striker as well, which is good. So I think we will sign him up and we'll see how he does after a few months in the academy. Uh, then we have Liam Edwards, 54 to 72, turning that player down. Uh, Ollie Potter, 63 to 81, after two months, turning him down as well. And then finally, Tyrrell Platt, 66 to 82, a winger fullback. It's the kind of player we're looking for, really, but that potential just isn't high enough. So his starting overall won't be great, and he won't grow to be that good either, I don't think. So we will reject that player. So we've got a couple of half-decent looking players uh, to scout for a bit longer. Okay, I'm just going to give you guys a quick roundup of how our youth academy is doing. So first up we have Charlie Essen with 74 to 80 potential. He is a winger player type but he is a striker so hopefully he's going to have a pretty decent pace and dribbling. Could be quite useful up front. Then we have Craig Lucas, a left winger with 67 to 87 potential. Then Daniel Gallagher, 79 to 94 potential. Either a right winger or a striker. He looks so, so good. That potential is probably going to narrow down even higher so that looks really useful. Uh, then Esteban Navarro, 80 to 86 uh, potential right winger. Uh, then uh, Fernando Monzon, 71 to 75 left back. He is defensive minded though, so he's not going to be very fast. So I'm probably going to get rid of him. He doesn't have very high potential either. But um, I may just leave him um, until May just to see if he gets a decent boost because we're not running out of space in the academy just yet. Uh, then we have Fraser Layden, 78 to 94 defensive minded. 
Uh, probably a defensive midfielder. Looks superb. He's got uh, good strength in jumping as well as good tackling. He could be a really useful defender. Uh, then Don Mahoney, 69 to 85 potential. Looks like either a left winger or a striker. Uh, then Juan Torres, 70 to 82 defensive minded right back. We'll have to see how he turns out. His potential is okay, but he is a defensive minded right back, so he's not going to be very fast. Had to wait on him a bit longer, I think. And then finally, Martin DeWitt, 73 to 79 playmaker in central midfield. So that is how our youth academy is doing this time round. Right, up next we have this game against Cardiff. Uh, it is a bit too late though because I'm going to uh, save that for next time because I've run out of time. Uh, hopefully we can get back on track. We really did get put in our place after that game against West Ham, didn't we? We are like the upstarts in the Premier League, doing better than we should, and we really got hammered there. Completely destroyed, 6-1 away. Uh, sorry, we were at home as well. It was 6-1 away for West Ham, and that really just shouldn't happen. But it was on Legendary, and we're really still getting to grips with it. So we'll have to see how we do next time against Cardiff. Uh, don't forget the scouting goal contest has just started again. Uh, this month it's on North American players because I realise I don't really get a lot of players from North America submitted. So if you have a player uh, from that region that you found who looks amazing, uh, make sure you take a picture when they're in the academy or just after they've been promoted. Try and make sure there's no stat growth if possible just to make it fair for everybody. Uh, you can send that picture to at FIFA Scouting on Twitter using the hashtag Scouting God or you can submit it to facebook.com slash FIFA Scouting Tips or leave a, comment, uh, in, uh, leave a comment below with a link to the images or you can uh, submit it on feverscoutingtips.com. Loads of ways of doing it. And that ends at the end of July, so you've got absolutely ages on that one. Like I said, North America. So when you go to Senior Scouts in North America, any of the countries that come up there uh, will be eligible. Um, as well as that, um, as I said, uh, as I sort of said on social, I've sent out a survey for um, basically improving what I do on YouTube and on the website. So if you've got any ideas for what you want me to do next, if you think I should do something a bit better, a bit different, uh, if there's something you really want me to really want me to do or something you really want me to drop, uh, let me know in that survey. It'll take literally 30 seconds to do, only a couple of questions. Uh, if you go on my uh, Twitter or Facebook accounts, the link will be there and I'll put a link in the description as well so you can find it really easily. Um, one thing in particular I want to know is do you guys want me to do two matches per episode or just one? If I do one, I can upload more regularly and uh, do more content um, quicker for you guys. But if I do two, uh, then it feels like, feels like you're getting a bit ba better value for money, I think. I kind of feel a bit bad just doing one game per episode, but if you guys want me to do that uh, so that I can do it more regularly, let me know. Uh, I really want to know that. Um, so like I said, fill out that survey as well if you can, that would be really, really useful for me. Uh, don't forget as well to uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this uh, video, and thanks for watching. This just was the highlight of it all really. My players jumping on each other's toes practically and then passing it to someone's heels who just didn't even care, didn't even notice the ball.